In prior lessons, we discussed and explored the topic of dynamics. We covered modal and time domain dynamics. We'll continue to explore this vast topic with a focus on one popular method to solve dynamic problems efficiently. This method is called the mode superposition method, or sometimes MSUP for short. Solving dynamic simulations such as transient structural, harmonic, among other linear dynamic simulations can be computationally demanding, and trying to get the solution in a timely manner can be critically important to the product design and analysis deadlines. This is where the mode superposition method comes in. Now, what is the basic concept behind the mode superposition method? We already know mode refers to one of the distinct patterns of natural vibration or natural frequency of a structure. The method of mode superposition essentially allows us to add two or more shapes to form a more complex combined shape. In beam theory, we can use this method to determine the deflection of a beam with multiple loads by combining the response from the individual loads. The same is true with dynamics. We can say the dynamic response of the structure is a combination of multiple natural frequencies at varying magnitudes and phase. We'll dive into these details in the next section. The method, mode superposition method, can be applied to several analysis types, but in this course, we will focus mainly on how it is applied to harmonic analysis. Harmonic analysis is the topic of an upcoming lesson. Now, when solving a harmonic analysis, we can solve the equations using the full method or the mode superposition method. The full method solves the equations using the full system matrices, so there is no approximation. But because of this, it is typically more time consuming. But first, let's compare the accuracy of the method of the harmonic analysis of a drone. A drone has multiple motors, and the motors can induce excitation that repeat repetitively due to the nature of the rotating blades. So say for example, an out of balance on a blade can cause the drone to vibrate. And this vibration migrates into the drone structure where typically a sensitive camera is mounted. If the vibration is not mitigated, the camera image will blur due to the motion. In this frequency response graph, we compare the full and the mode superposition methods. The graph shows the expected amplitude of vibration at a specific location over a range of frequencies. Notice how closely the two graphs match each other. Now in order for the mode superposition method to be accurate, a sufficient number of modes needs to be included in the solution. If not, then we will experience what is called mode truncation error. We'll learn more about this in a later section. So we see the method can be accurate, but what about the performance? As stated earlier, the method is an approximate technique, and with approximate techniques, one can expect efficiencies in the solution, and that is exactly what we have and we show here. Since we use factored mode shapes and not the full matrices, the computation to a solution is significantly faster. It's just worth noting that for models with small number of degrees of freedom, this performance gain may not be realized as the full matrices for small models can be solved rather quickly. And there is some initial overhead in the MSUP solutions as the modes are computed. Now for large models, this overhead and computational time up front for the mode solution is really not all that significant when compared to the overall solution time, since once we have the modes, the MSUP method is fast and efficient. It is also worth mentioning that the basic principle of mode superposition method in ANSYS is also utilized for random vibrations as well as response spectrum. These topics are not covered in this particular series. In the next section, we will discuss more of the concepts and details of the mode superposition method.